My name is Ian Lewis, and this is for the Sacred Inclusion Network. Um, I'm very excited because this is my first time posting our explorations, as well as booking our guest, Jamie Suss. And uh, not only is he a rem remarkable practitioner, uh, a teacher, and a yogi, but he's also a friend and someone who's helped me out personally. So before I fully introduce him, I just want to thank all the participants for being here. Thank you so much for joining us and anyone who's watching us in the future as this goes on YouTube. Super appreciative. This is the Sacred Inclusion Network. And so now we're going to start with a little grounding exercise. So if anybody, everybody can kind of just start to get comfortable in their chair and, you know, start to feel, feel your butt in your chair, feel your feet on the ground. You want to sit upright in a I'm comfortable sitting. position. I need to or, go to a different spot. <laughs> however, however is comfortable for you. Oh, um, okay. You can be, you know, you can you can be standing as well. I'm in bed. <laughs> uh, and, and you can be laid down as well. Whatever is comfortable for you. Okay. Um, you know, just start to embody that. And so I want you to close your eyes. And after your eyes are closed, take both of your hands and put them upon your heart. And just feel your heartbeat, connect with your heart. And so as you hold your hands on your heart, I want you to take deep breaths through your nose at your pace. And we are focused on connecting our, to our heart space with every breath. So for a few moments, just feel, breathe into your hands, feel your heart. And as we continue this practice, I want you to ask yourself, what do you need to hear today? So ask yourself that as you breathe and see what comes up. And as an example, you could say, you know, I am safe or I am loved or it is going to be all right. So now you should have something in your mind, heart, soul, and body that you believe that you need to hear today. So you can do it in your mind. You can do it out loud. Um, I want you to, as you breathe in at the top, say what you need to hear to yourself and then breathe out and let that feeling sink in. Few more breaths. All right, now you can let your eyes slowly open. You can find someone on the screen. Give them a look, and I hope that um, we've provided some love and some moral support for ourselves um, on this lovely morning. And um, yeah, I wanted to do that. It's a little intertwined with affirmations because that is what uh, Jamie is going to, well, the main focus of today's exploration. And um, so, yeah, again, thank you all for being here. And so I'm going to introduce Jamie briefly and then. You can take it away. 
Um, so like I said, Jamie, you know, he's not only a great practitioner, he's a personal friend. He has really helped me. Um, we met at a permaculture course in Southern Ecuador where we live. And I remember the first time talking to him, we got into a really deep conversation. And I remember thinking like, wow, we share a lot of like opinions and thoughts on a lot of things, but his ability to express them is so much more eloquent and he can go like deeper into the topics that we've gone off of. I was impressed. And so about maybe eight to nine months later, I asked him to like give me life coach sessions and he really helped me. One specific thing that comes up the most is he helped me identify my inner saboteur, which is that inner voice that, you know, he says negative things about you and puts yourself down. And so we identified it, we worked through it and why, how, who, and I just remember it really helped me in starting the journey of like positive self-talk, which has helped me in a lot of ways since. And so personally, I'm very thankful for Jamie to be here. And I think everyone's going to enjoy this experience. Um, but OK, so Jamie, um, he attained his B.A. in international trade relations. And since then, he's been traveling, working, doing volunteer projects in Europe, and Latin America. He spent 15 years as an English as a second language teacher in Peru, Colombia, Guatemala, and Mexico. Another thing, probably the best gringo I've ever heard speak Spanish. Um, <laughs> um, and he went to start his master's degree in applied linguistics, but he kind of got tired of academia and he shifted his path toward the more spiritual focus, which led him to getting his yoga teaching certification teaching yoga for the past 10 years in Spanish and English. And now he lives in Southern Ecuador, where same town as I live. And he invests his time in community in, into community engagement and expansion. He is an integral organizer of the wellness festival that happens down here yearly. And he conducts silent meditation, meditation retreats, which I recently, he did a three day retreat last weekend and I got to participate on the last day Sunday which was a, a very powerful, expansive experience. So Jamie, thank you for, so much for being here. I'm looking forward to this as well as our participants and um, take it away, brother. Yeah, mm -hmm. cheers. And thank you for inviting me to be part of the Sacred Inclusion Network and share different things with uh, the friends and family that we have here. So um, welcome everyone. I'm Jamie Suss, as Ian has introduced. And I, before we begin, I want to make sure that everyone has a magic wand, i.e. your pen yes. and a piece of paper, because we will be using our tools today. Mm -hmm. So as we began with our breathing, we're going to use a combination of different things today. And before we get into that, I'd like to share with you um, what we're doing today is we are doing a small group, small group live coaching session. So we are going to supercharge some affirmations today. And before we get into that, I want to share with you some of the history, the power and influence of affirmations. So if we look at where affirmations come from, we see that in the modern day times that they came from 19th century, the 1800s from a French uh, psychologist and pharmacist, Emile Cui. And this person thought that the imagination was so strong that they were able to repeat certain ideas that the body would accept the suggestions. And this is where we get auto self-suggestions, self-talk and positive self-talk. And so bringing it forward to the modern times, we see that this comes from a lot of the self-help gurus, particularly Louis Hay, Louis Hay. If you know Hay House Publishing, Wayne Dyer, he was one of her biggest authors. Um, this came from, a, from the mid 80s, more or less. And what we see is that we are going from ancient mantras to modern mindfulness, and we're tying this all together. So if the imagination is so strong that what I can think enough, a thought and repetition becomes a belief, the more I think something, the more I believe it to be true, well, then it can have a certain effect upon the body. So today we're going to experiment with the combination of our thoughts, our words, our breath, and the body. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if we look at where affirmations come from in the ancient texts, say from the Vedas, in Hinduism, 
we have this concept of, well, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let me back up. Mm -hmm. So from Emile Cooley, from the, the French uh, psychologist and, and pharmacist, he, what he gave us is this easy rhythm to repeat. And this is simple enough in every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. And you can repeat this and notice that there's a different feeling with it. So take a moment, write this down, mm -hmm. plant the seed in your mind, say it to yourself slowly, every day, in every way, mm -hmm. I am getting better and better. Every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. And so as we dive deeper into this, I'm going to share with you some different language patterns, some different ways of, of opening our perspective, because for me, words are the building blocks of the mind. And the way that we use our words, whether that be our thought or our spoken word, our language, becomes some type of effect within the mind, like a fantasy or a daydream or a mind movie or some type of image. And then that image becomes something within the body, whether that be can called energy or emotion, it could become some type of behavior. So within all of this, we look at where the origins of this come from. And from the ancient Vedas, we see that a mantra, today an affirmation, what we call an affirmation, was back then called a mantra. And what from Sanskrit, translating literally man, meaning mind, and tra, meaning tool. So a mantra was simply a way of using vocal words to focus the mind, to be a tool of the mind. And so with that tool, we're able to cultivate healthy self-talk. We're able to cultivate compassion from within. We're able to cultivate empathy. We're also able to direct our lives in the direction we want them to go. Uh, something my driver instructor used to tell me was, you know, pay attention where the wheel is turned because you're going to end up going there. Now, when it comes to what drives the mind, pay attention to where your thoughts go because that's where your life will go. What you believe is what you become. And what we expect tends to be realized. We tend to create what we expect. So the whole point of using affirmations is to direct the mind where we want it to go, because if we are unaware, you know, we're hoping for the best, yet we're planning for the worst, we tend to get both at the same time. So how can we overcome some of these small um, obstacles, these challenges that in some ways are created for from by ourselves on the inside? So... Now I'm going to explain to you how this model works, how we move from words being the building blocks of the mind to becoming a reality. And this is how humans, we make sense of the world. We make sense of the world through stories, through myth, through fable, through fairy tale. Um, so the way I use my words, do this with me across the top of your screen, the way I use my words, and my words can be considered language, right? Internal thought and spoken word. The way I use my words becomes an image in the mind. That image can be a fantasy, it can be a mind movie, it can be a daydream, it can be a nightmare. But the way I use my words becomes an image in the mind, and that image becomes some type of behavior. Right? So my language becomes an image, right? The imagination gets excited, it becomes an image, and that becomes some type of energy. Right. So... When we're looking at how words become reality, it has to do with through story. So if we look at how this was from the Greek terms, we'll take logos, meaning logic, right? And then we take pathos, meaning pathology, which we can take emotion from. And then this goes into ethos, which is our ethics, which is our external world. And then it goes into the mythos, the myth, which is the story we tell ourselves to ourselves about ourselves. So the way I use my words becomes a story. If I repeat the story enough over time, I believe that story to be true, whether it be accurate or not. 
And then that story propels my life forward. So I had a client session and this person was stuck in a story of hurt from the past. And what they discovered was is that the, the story from the past that still affected them today kept them out of being present. So when someone asked them, why are you this way? They said, well, 10 years ago, I had an accident. I had a diagnosis. Something happened that got their attention. They, they had a bad breakup. They lost their job. Something happened that created an abrupt change. And what they're saying is that for 10 years, they've been in an emotional reaction. They've been in, in an out of balance state. So like, it's okay to have emotions, upregulated, downregulated emotions. It's okay. Now, if we hold on to them for too long, then that's where the issues come in. If I hold on to an emotion long enough, it becomes a feeling. If I hold on to a feeling even longer, it becomes a mood. Why are you in a bad mood? Why are you in a good mood? Right? So we hold on that it becomes a mood. The longer I hold on to a mood, it becomes a temperament. Right? We associate that with the temper, usually the impulse to anger. And then the longer I hold on to that, it becomes a personality characteristic. Right. And so it becomes how your personality is your personal reality. And the way we use our words affects the images in the mind that become some type of behavior. Now, today, there are many of us here on the call. And if I say something like, I wish I didn't have these problems, whatever my problems may be, I wish I didn't have these problems. Now I'm imagining myself with these problems. And I'm also in some way behaving, whether internally, how I talk to myself or externally, how I treat others that I have or am worried about these problems. Now, at some point in time of the day, all of you will imagine me with that thing that I'm looking to avoid, my problems. And at some point in the day, because of that imagination activating within the body, we may even treat each other as if I have these problems. So the way we use our words becomes a story. The story over time becomes our reality. And so our personality today is a reflection of our personal reality. And so here's what we're going to do today. When it comes to creating and drafting, crafting, empowering, and supercharging our own affirmations, this is the how. These are the different steps we're going to take today. And before we get there, I'm going to continue to front load some information of the way we use our words, right? The grammar and the way that the grammar that we use affects the logic, right? So the grammar being my language again, affects my logic. And then my logic becomes some type of rhetoric. If I'm using the, the linguistics aspect, rhetoric being form, function, use, application of the language. Right, so today I'm going to share three language mistakes that to be aware of that fuel the victim mentality. But before I do that, I need to define the victim mentality. So here's the definition, and I'm going to repeat it a couple of times. So the victim mentality is an acquired personality trait wherein a person tends to consider himself or herself the victim of the negative circumstances and situations in life, even in the absence of clear evidence. And a victim mentality depends on habitual thought processes and its attributes. So again, the victim mentality is an acquired personality trait, which means it's learned, where a person tends to consider himself or herself. It's a tendency. They tend to do it. They consider them themselves as the victim of negative situations and circumstances in life even in the absence of clear evidence. So even when they are shown that it is not true, they still have this tendency, this acquired belief, this uh, learned helplessness, hopelessness, powerlessness, and it fuels itself because the victim mentality is dependent on the way we think. So if I constantly am comparing myself to others and I think, well, they have everything that I don't, or why am I so uh, in a negative, in a bad space in life? Well, what this creates is a not good enough, inferior, superior complex. 
And what we find in life is that there are winners and losers, and both of them walk away with their own complexes. So if it's the, the person who's sleeping in the streets or the person who's on Wall Street, unfortunately, they're both driven by a certain level of inferiority, superiority, that is still driven by a belief system of not good enough, not enough, not good enough. And, and so as we're breaking this down, I'm going to share with you the three different language patterns. And the first one has to do with projections. A projection is when I place my responsibility for my thoughts and emotions onto others. It's quite often used with the words, you, he, she, it, they, a person's name, right? You embarrassed me. You made me angry. Now, is that actually true? Is that accurate? And what I'm looking at here and in opening up this conversation that way of you made me angry. If I take out you and I replace that with I, I made me angry. Is that more accurate? The person didn't make me angry. I was already angry. They are showing me the external reflection of what I was already internally feeling, right? Because we are all mirrors of each other. We mirror so many different things about our own experiences in life. And so projection is when I place the responsibility for what I think, feel, and act on the outside versus taking responsibility, which is a reflection. When I made me angry, right? I felt embarrassed. How could you embarrass me? When the reality is that I felt embarrassed by what you did, yet the truth is what you did is irrelevant. I felt embarrassed, right? Because I think my thoughts, I feel my feelings, and where do they live? Inside my body. So by relinquishing my responsibility, by projecting it onto others, I'm pushing away my ability to do anything with it, my ability to be responsible, my ability to respond to what's happening internally. When I re- claim my responsibility by reflecting on it, seeing what's deeper with inside of me. I made me angry. I felt embarrassed. I'm able to do something with it. I'm able to sit with it, even if it's uncomfortable. And that's because this uncomfort can, this discomfort can lead to other things, right? So a, if you have an ill at ease thought or an ill at ease emotion, this dis-ease in the mind will become a disease in the body or some other type of physical manifestation, right? So this is all discovered through where we are taking affirmations from. If I'm able to affect the imagination through the way that I speak, my body will receive the message because whether I imagine it or believe it, whatever I think within the mind will become true within the body. So quite often someone will say, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick, and they stay sick versus I'm healing or I'm getting better, right? Every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. Now, this was a big deal for me when I used to work with uh, people in a rehab addiction clinic. And they would constantly say, I'm an addict, I'm an addict, I'm an addict. And they were affirming to themselves the negative thing in life. And so we were able to adjust their language by changing one word, I'm able to change the grammar, and that changed how they looked at it. They said, I'm in recovery. I'm in recovery, right? Because sometimes people can label themselves as something and say, forever, I'm an addict. By changing that one word from addict to recovery, it made it so that they saw that they were in a temporary state versus a forever state. And so it's coming back into our personality being your personal reality. Your personality, your identity is flexible. It's not static. You're not who you are today, who you were five years ago, 10 years ago, five weeks ago. So these things are flexible. Your story is flexible. And so by showing you how the language works, we can show that there's flexibility within all this, which leads me to the next language mistake that we make. And it's soft talk. Soft talk is very pervasive because we want to be polite. We want to be courteous and respectful. So it has its strategic use. 
Now, soft talk refers to the overuse of softening words that diminishes clarity. It creates vagueness, right? Do you maybe kind of sort of want to get married? Um, do you kind of like that food? Is that pretty good? Right. So kind of, sort of, maybe, pretty, pretty much, little. These softening words are useful, yet at the same time, the overuse and abuse of them, abuse being like abnormal use, like another one, heard myself just say it. When we overuse these, then we find that we are taking away from the actual meaning within right? Because I could, I've done a lot of internal work within my own mother, father wound, my own uh, family line and so on. And I could say, maybe I'm still mad at my dad. And I could be in that space for a long time, right? I could be in that gray area. Maybe, yeah, maybe I'm still mad at my dad. If I take out the maybe, I am so much more closer to being accurate. I'm still mad at my dad. Oh, wow. What changes in it, that image in the mind is like, instead, I could say, maybe I'm still mad at my dad. Maybe I'm still gray here. And I have this kind of blah feeling within me, kind of blah, right? If I take out the soft language, the soft talk, it becomes more solid. And when it's solid, I can do something with it. I'm still mad at my dad. Oh, I see how I acted because I was imagining myself being angry at my father. And then what did I do about that? Well, what can I do about that? Oh, I'm angry at him because, and then realizing that as a child, I didn't understand the stresses of adult life of a parent. And as a kid, we don't realize those things, yet we create our own complex of like, must be something I did wrong, right? Mom and dad are fighting because it's my fault. When as kids, we don't realize the, the stresses that adults go through. And so Coming back to, if I can remove 50% of my soft talk, if you can remove 50% over the next year, you'll notice that you'll have clearer speech. You'll have clearer thoughts. You'll also be more likely to attain your goals. And this leads me to our next language mistake that we make, and it's negations, right? So earlier I gave an example of I don't want to have these problems anymore. So don't, won't, can't, isn't, haven't, doesn't, anything with a negative. It focuses the mind on something that we are looking to avoid. And it's interesting because the three most important and powerful words that we have is no, what we disagree with, yes, what we do agree with, and wow, those moments that take our breath away, right? So. When we are focusing on something that we don't want, I don't want to eat, I'm on a diet, right? I'm doing something healthy for myself, which means I can't have eggs, I can't have gluten, I can't have sugar, I can't have these things. So I'm now focused on all the things that I am looking to avoid, yet I can only focus on those things versus what I do get to have. I do get to have healthy fruits and vegetables. I do get to have... Uh, source of protein. I do get to have other things. And so with the negation, it hyper focuses the mind like a laser beam on the thing that you don't want to do. I don't want to feel like this at work anymore. I don't want to have another day like that. Well, what do you want instead? Oh, I want to, how do I want to feel at the end of a hard day's work doing what I love? How do I want to be able to handle a stressful situation with others? And so it's getting into the affirmation, saying it in the affirmative, because in the subconscious mind, if we're talking about the conscious and the subconscious mind, the conscious mind is our language center. The subconscious mind is our image, our memory, our imagination, our memory. It's, it is much stronger than the conscious mind. And so in the, the subconscious mind, no does not exist. There's nothing in the subconscious mind that says no. In fact, it glances right over. You can tell your kid, don't do that. And they just heard, do that. Because the mind glances right over it. And you said, well, I told you not to do that. Well, as parents, as coaches, as teachers, many of us, we find ourselves that we uh, we repeat ourselves a lot, right? We give instructions. 
Now, am I able to give instructions in the same way each time without losing my cool, right? And the more often I do it, realizing that my kids will listen to me. So if I say it in the affirmative, the way I do want, right? Don't bite me. No, teeth are for chewing, right? So, uh, you know, six-year-old kid wants to play around and, blah, 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 and, and chew and bite. Well, if I say don't bite, don't do that, the, the mind and the child is unaware of this because we don't understand where language comes from still. Out of all the studies we have, they, they understand what language does, but where it comes from is still a mystery. Now, the, the child is simply a product of their environment at that point. So if they, we say, don't do this, well, they just hear, do this. And so we tell them what we do want instead, right? Instead of don't talk back to me, don't be late for school. Yeah, please speak to me respectfully. Please be on time. More likely to happen. You know, it's back to the, the, the uh, way of calling your shot, right? You call your shot, you're more likely to get it versus I, what you don't want to do, which means that you're hoping for the best while planning for the worst and having both at the same time. So if I can take a negation and I can translate it, I can flip it into an affirmation, I'm more likely to see what is accurate, right? So if I'm able to take something that was soft talk, remove the kind of maybe sort of like, you know, uh, I believe, I think, these statements that we use to soften up our speech, I think I love you. How would that feel? Someone says, I think I love you versus I love you. Or here's the tricky one when it comes back to negations. And with a negation, a soft negation is but. Commonly, we use it as, as a way, as a segue into other subjects. How would it feel if someone says, you did a great job, but I love you. But does it feel like a great job? Do you feel loved? Right? So getting into that, instead of using but, use and. I love you. And we can do this differently. You did a great job. And next time we can improve on this. Right? So you can use this either internal, in relationships, in the workplace. Now, with projections, it's about using more I language what I think, what I feel, what I notice. I noticed when this happened, right? Making an observation versus a projection. When you did that, this happened. It's all your fault, right? Projections deal with blame, shame, guilt, pointing the finger somewhere else. And as you may have heard or know from uh, other walks of life, the finger that I point at you has three fingers that point back at me, right? So I can't judge you for anything without realizing that I'm judging myself for something else. So moving forward, let's talk about the architect mentality because that's what we're building here today. Now the architect mentality is the strategic use of empowering language that provides clarity and confidence. Now what is confidence? We take the word confide from confidence. Confidence means to confide. You have trust in somebody. It's confidential, right? So this has to do with self-trust. How much confidence do I have within myself? How do I confide, right? Which means to lead with vulnerability, to be courageous, right? So if I'm able to show that I'm scared, I'm scared right now, and it's uncomfortable. And if I can do that, I'm using my architect mentality to be able to build something as far as a relationship that's more empowered. So again, the architect mentality is the use of constructive language that builds empowered relationships, self-confidence and security. Security in ourself creates us more stable here versus looking to the outside world to tell me I'm a good person. One of the biggest problems that I have found and that has been shown to me through the different subjects that I've learned is that most of humanity is looking for external approval. Tell me I'm a good boy or a good girl as a kid grows into an adult. Tell me I'm a good worker. Tell me I'm a good person. Tell me I'm a good lover. And so we're looking for this external approval 
for something that we can totally cultivate and create for ourselves on the inside. So again, the architect mentality is the use of constructive, the strategic use of constructive language that builds empowered relationships, internal confidence, and social security. And I mean social security in the way of our relationships are our fuel. It's also our sanctuary. It's where we are able to let down our guard and we're able to bear and share what what is uh, what weighs on us in a way where we're not judged. And I say that in acknowledging the negation of not being judged, because what I judge about you reflects what I judge about myself. So let's get into this. So everyone has their pen, their magic, magic wand. Let's design your own mantra. So today, we're going to start with drafting in the first step. So the first step of a draft, just like when you were in school, if you handed in your first draft, the teacher may have said, good job, go revise it, and then bring it back, right? So the first draft is allowing us simply to get the thoughts out of the head and onto the paper. And so what I want you to do is I want you to write five affirmations for the rest of this year. What are five things that you want to remind yourself of that will help you out for the rest of 2023? You know, we just had the solstice, and so we've only got a few months left here in, in the year. What are five things that will help you move gracefully into 2024? And I'll just say that if you're watching this on YouTube, you should be writing these affirmations down as well. Yeah, and share them in the comment section as well. We'd love to see what everyone else comes with, up with. Today, we're truly an international audience. We are here in Latin America, North America, Africa. We've got quite the group going on. So we'd love to see what else you all have. And also here, if you're live in the Zoom room, please share it in the chat. Thank you, Katie Rose. I have an abundance of time, energy, and money. And so here in the first draft is our chance to get the different thoughts out so we can refine them. So I'd love to open up the floor uh, to anyone who would like to share, share one of your affirmations, and we'll craft it in a way that we can also adjust the language if there needs to be any adjusting. So I hear Sana Sade here in the chat shares, I am wealthy, happy, healthy, kind, and successful. And I love that you use the word wealthy. Wealthy being a combination of wealth and health, wellness and health, right? Wealthy has more to do with, do you have health, right? If health being freedom these days, wealthy being wellness and health, well-being and health. I love life and life loves me. Great. I am enough. And that is a huge one, right? And what is enough for you today may be different than what it was enough for you yesterday. 
which may be a different for what is enough for you tomorrow. Realizing that each day we can go through the ups and downs, yet what remains is that I am plenty, I am enough. I affirm I am creating spiritual, emotional, financial, and physical wealth every day. Beautiful. Well said. And well said in the way that we are creating it, right? So once we get into the flow, realizing that we created a situation where we can flow. So we're using this combination of masculine and feminine, the combination of structure and nurture. So within the structure that I create, I can let down my guard. I can surrender to the current and be able to learn how to flow. So I create it. And you can get even more specific. I am creating spiritual wealth by investing 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day in meditation. I am creating emotional wealth by sharing my thoughts and feelings with those that I have confidence with. I am creating financial wealth by creating a budget and taking care of my budget by making sure that I have savings or able to uh, a good definition of abundance is having what you need when you need to do it. Because quite often we look at abundance or wealth and well-being as certain numbers in the bank. And quite often people will say, once I have a million dollars, I'll be happy. They get the million dollars and they're still not happy right? Because they've tied their happiness to a number, to something external. And whereas like I'm happy and I've made myself abundant, which means I have what I need to do when I need to do it. Today, I am kind to myself. And that's a big one, right? Being kind to ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> And being kind to ourselves is a huge one, right? As far as the difference of being nice versus kind. You know, nice can be pleasant, whereas kind is compassionate. And it's it's using our empathy, saying that uh, even though I may be experiencing some discomfort, even though I may be having a bad day, right? I still have survived 100% of all the bad days I've ever had. I'm still here. I create an abundance of positivity everywhere I go. Exactly. I'm able to make a positive impact. Even if it's in a simple conversation like this one this morning, I'm able to make a positive impact in a way that helps to influence people. And so that's why I asked you to grab your magic wand, aka pen, because we're talking about magic here, word magic at this point. And when we think about magic, commonly we think of the word abracadabra, right? Abracadabra, literally being a magic word from Aramaic, one of the four ancient languages. And it means with my word, I create or influence right? So if we look at what the definition of magic is, is the use or the use of words or a combination of words known to have power or influence. So what we're doing here is we're creating our own internal word magic. And so we're casting our own spell, right? By literally spelling the word. And so by putting this out, we're creating our own internal magic spell that works within the combination of my conscious and subconscious mind, that are in agreement with something that I can uh, ground into the body. I am an enlightened and infinite being. Beautiful. Acknowledging that I am here in my conscious human experience. I am also connected to the divine source, God, goddess, wherever you source your power. I radiate wealth in my daily life, which exudes into a global impact. Beautiful. Uh, Prativa gives us her first statement, I radiate wealth in my daily life. And then she gives us the benefit of it because she gives us a reason. It exudes a, into a global impact, right? So we're talking about the butterfly effect. We're able to make a small impact here that across the world makes another impact there. 
Okay. So here within the group, everyone looks as though we have strong affirmations. So that's where we would craft them if we need to craft them. So I had a affirmation workshop that I did where someone said, I don't want to be angry anymore. Well, they were putting that in their mind that they're going to stay angry. And so we adjusted the language and said, and said, instead of getting angry, I take three breaths. That was their affirmation. The affirmation became build bridges instead of dropping bombs because the, their impulse to anger would be to bomb a situation. And so we were able to craft it in a way where it became more easier for them to build bridges instead of drop bombs. And that's what it became for them. Build bridges instead of drop bombs. Because they said, I don't want to be angry. Now, here within our group, we are all set to move forward to the next part. So I'm going to ask us to empower it. Take your five affirmations and look at them, read them out loud to yourself slowly. What type of mind movie comes up when you imagine being this person who radiates wealth? You walk into a room and simply, you know, we have this expression, you can cut the tension with the knife. What if it's the other way? I walk into a room and simply by being in this positive state of, of being, I'm able to make an impact without words or with words, right? Because I radiate. So I invite you to empower this within your imagination. How does it, what's the movie that comes into your mind? What type of images, what type of interactions do you imagine? What type of fantasies or daydreams are coming as you take this tool that we're creating and formulate it so it grounds it in the mind. So what types of images come to mind? Anyone want to share? If not, I'll choose you. So I see here, there's ones, I am enlightened, infinite being. And what I imagine with that is that someone who has invested the time to be aware that they are more than what they see in front of them, that they are able to see through their eyes as that enlightened, infinite being that it's something that is part of who they are versus how they decorate themselves or how they use a, a title of some type. It's simply who you are versus who we tell other people that we are. When I imagine what it would be like to have a life that I love, I love life and life loves me, shows that there's less resistance, right? Maybe we've had times in our lives where we were depressed, going through grief or anxiety, depression, and I didn't love life. And it was shown back to me as I had constant resistance and struggle, life didn't love me. Now I'm able to change that. I love life, which means I love the difficult parts of life too, because you know there, there are no such things as nightmares. There are lessons. Right? There are, and, and lessons, once we complete one lesson, our next lesson will begin. And lessons never end, right? So when I imagine the things I want in my life, I see myself having them, right? And so let me ask you that question. What is it you want to be, to do, or to have in life? Because if you choose what, you're, what you don't want to have, what you don't want to be, or what you don't want to do, you're focusing on those things. And if you choose not to have it all, you're choosing how much less of whatever it all means to you, well, you're choosing how much less of that's available. So again, as we use our words as these building blocks, you can see what you're building. These words are a tool. And a tool can 
build a temple, right? It can build a temple or it can destroy a home, right? So a hammer has the power to build, construct with our architect mentality, or it can destroy through conflict. And so now I would like to ask everyone to open up their microphones and we're going to supercharge our affirmations. And we're going to say them all together. And here's how we're going to do it. So as you open up your microphone, one breath cycle, which means full inhale, full exhale, between each time, each affirmation. So let's all start with the breath together. Full inhale, breathe in. Full exhale, blow it out. Now your turn. Take a breath in and speak your affirmation to the world. Be a positive influence on people around me. Say it like you mean it. Communication channels <laughs> with my loved ones. Positive influence on yeah, them. I, mean, I radiate wealth in my daily life, which exudes a global impact every day. I work well with my friends to take care of our animals. It's going to be okay. It is going to be okay. Full breath in. Breathe all the way in. Bring it into the body. And full breath out. Love life and life loves me. I love life. And life loves me. Look how sweetly that came out. From victim to student of life. Um, I am frugal. I am frugal. I live with more bravery. Yeah, I live with more bravery. I am courageous. And I lead with vulnerability. Vulnerability I learn is every courage. Day. I learn every day. I am honest with myself and others. That is a big one. I love that. Full breath in, full breath out. Say it again. I am honest with myself and others. I am honest with myself and others. <clears throat> I am a good neighbor. And that is so important in our communities. Being a good neighbor. I'm a good neighbor. Making a difference. I'm making a difference. I make a difference. I make a positive difference. I move with integrity. I like that one. I move with integrity. Because how I think, how I feel becomes how I act. And if I can align all three of these or get two out of three aligned, the third will come together. So if I can think with integrity and act with integrity, my feelings will be in integrity. I find ways to help children. Beautiful. I find solutions to help children. Yeah, that's even better. I trust in the richness of today. Yeah, beautiful. The richness, the fullness, the plentitude. I trust in it, which comes back to confidence. I trust myself in the richness of today. I embrace and inspire the child within. Amazing. Embrace as in hug, right? I am able to comfort the part of me, that younger part of me. I'm able to embrace them, acknowledge them, saying, I'm sorry that you were hurt back then. You didn't know then what we know now. And I can embrace that. 
and inspire, meaning to breathe, uh, respirate, right? Respire, inspire, I mean, breathing inside the spirit within, right? So I'm able to hug and acknowledge the spirit of the child within me. And this is beautiful, especially when it comes to inner child work. I am a creator, beautiful. And the way that I show my love for great creator is through creativity, right? I am creative. I am a creator. I am an Ascension co-pilot. I love that. You know, what we give to the universe, it sings back to us. That's why we call it a verse in a song, right? And here we have the universe, the one song. And so I'm a co-pilot with it. I am a vessel for the divine. Right? I allow spirit to flow and work through me. I am the author of my own story. Beautiful. Mm, yeah. So it shows that you as the author, the author who writes, literally is writing this down right now, the author who writes their rights is and you've become the authority because you are the author. And as the authority, you choose what has meaning and what doesn't. And what has meaning is in your story, since you are the main character in your story. And you get to choose how you go through whatever it is you go through. So if it's, you know, so you have to go do something difficult, how do you want to be on the other side? How do you want to go through it? We know we have to do a lot of difficult things in life. And these challenges never end. Unfortunately, you know, it's, it's part of life. How do I want to go through it is my choice. How I get to the other side, you know, that's the journey. And this is the biggest part of the way we're using our language, because in school, I learned, you know, what to do. And when it comes, comes to constructing sentences and paragraphs and writing a five paragraph essay, I learned what to do in those ways. But nowhere did it ever teach me how to use my language in a way that was constructive for me internally how to use my language in a way that I can stop imagining negative stories. I can stop self-sabotaging because how I use my language was self-sabotage. And so I bring you to this. Here we are, all of us change makers, making an impact in our community in different ways, large and small. And if you really want to change your reality, right, your personal reality, which is your personal reality, change your words. And by making small adjustments in your words, right, you can make a small adjustment to the logic of it. And from the logic, I have a different feeling from it. And from that different feeling, I tell a different story, especially as the author of my own story. So if you'd like, I have a bonus that I'd love to share with you. Everyone up? Good game. Want to do a little extra bonus? Yep. Okay. See a couple thumbs up. Hey, Jamie, just to let you know, we're, we are got a half hour left and we do want to leave some space for questions. Okay. So Excellent. Yeah. So this will, be a, this will be a quick bonus. As we've been working through our language, quite often what we do is we sabotage ourselves by what I call shooting on the situation. So this extra bonus is going to be a should detox. If there's one word you can go on a diet from, it's the word should, right? Should implies obligation. It implies recommendation. It also implies um, something that I uh, am not doing yet. I am, putting pressure on myself to do. So I'm going to invite you below your five affirmations, write five things you should be doing, right? I should be taking a half hour walk with no device once a day. I should be eating healthier. I should call my mother and father, right? Whatever you should be doing. Take a moment, write down five things you should be doing.
And again, for those of you who are watching this, the, uh, the post recording, I invite you to share this in the chat, the text, the comments. What is something you should be doing? Um, and if you'd like to share it here in our in our Zoom chat, feel free. What's something you should be doing or should have or should anything? I should exercise every day. How long should you exercise? Five hours? Well, wait, that might be too much. Might, right? Take out the might. Yep, that is too much. How long would be a good recommendation? I should exercise more, make more money, and start my business. Okay. The three separate ones, right, in, in that one. I should exercise. I should make more money. I should start my business. Now, with what we've been talking about today, if I'm able to play the one word game with me while we're here, if I'm able to change one word in the grammar, I'm able to adjust the logic. If I change the information that I have, I have a different set of knowledge to work from. And from a different set of knowledge, I have a different form of wisdom that comes from it. So I should be completing projects. What's it take to complete a project? Quite often, we're overwhelmed by the big picture of the project. Can I put this project into smaller chunks? What's something I can do in the next 48 hours on my project? What's something I can do for the next two weeks on my project? What's something that needs to be done the next two months? So play the one word game with me. As we adjust our grammar, notice how the image in your mind changes. And I want you to take that sentence that you wrote with should, write it again, except this time, instead of using should, use could. I could exercise more. I could start my business. Now here I have one in the chat. I should write and revisit my plan one hour every day. When I play the one word game and I make the small adjustment from should to could, I could write, I could revisit my plan. What comes to mind? It's okay to make mistakes and try my best. Now, from here, I would take out try, and instead of try, put in do. Try as an, is an interesting word that we tend to use in the way of it implies fail. There's a back door. There's a way for me to, well, I, I tried to call you, but you didn't, didn't answer, right? Negation. I tried. Did I call? Yes, I did my best. Did you not answer? That's the effect, cause and effect. So remove, try, put in, do. I do my best. And what is my best today is different than what was my best yesterday. It's different what my best will be tomorrow or next week. I do what I can every day to achieve my goals. Now, Ian, something I would love to plant the seed with here in the Sacred Inclusion Network is if you'd love to have me back, I'd love to come back again and do something with goal setting. What can we do with taking our dreams and turning them into goals? And how can we turn that goal into a plan and the identity of the person who achieves the goal? Because this is where affirmations lead. It's okay to make mistakes and do my best, right? There are no such things as mistakes. There's lessons. That's the difference between an error and a mistake. We make errors. A mistake is something I learned from. I could be more giving to loved ones. Opens up a huge realm of possibilities now. Yeah, it's possible. I could do that. I could be more giving. I could be more giving in 
Now you can get more specific in what kind of ways. I could be more giving with my time. I could be more giving with my playful energy. And so now as we continue playing the one word game, from your list of five things you should be doing, instead of could, I want you to take could and turn it into can. And notice how changing one word, adjusting one word, adjusts the whole image, the logic, the pathos, the ethos that will become the mythos. I can achieve my goals. I, it's okay to make mistakes. I can do my best. I can do well with my wealth creation. I can make more money. I can exercise every day. Notice how that changes within the mind. Notice how it feels different within your body. Is it more likely to happen than a, yeah, I should exercise. And I could stay with that uh, for a long time, right? I can find time to meditate every day. Beautiful. Now get specific. What time? What times are the best times of day for you to meditate? Most people, the practice is in the morning. The mind is fresh. We're less distracted. Or some people need it in the afternoon. Some people need it during a lunch break. Some people do it at night before they go to bed. What's the best time for you to meditate? And as you can see, as we're getting more and more specific, we're getting into the details. And so we've gone from the global and we're getting into the details. And in the details is where these affirmations, is where this should detox brings out the clarity, right? If I'm able to adjust the information I have, the type of knowledge I'm able to share or work from, it creates a different type of wisdom. This is back to using the grammar. If I adjust one word within the grammar, there's a different logic, different type of thinking that comes with it. And we have a different type of, um, yeah, rhetoric, form, function, use, application of what we do. I can spend one hour every evening to meditate. Beautiful. I would adjust this statement one step further. Instead of saying spend, I would say invest. And the reason why I would say invest, because spend, we use tend to use lots of similar words with time and money. Of course, there's that old expression that time is money. Yet when I spend time or I spend money, it tends to imply squander as in waste. Yet when I invest in something, I have an expectation of a return. I get something back for what I invest. So I invest an hour every evening to meditate. Now, an hour can be a lot to meditate. Maybe a good place to start would be to invest in a half an hour. And I can build to investing into an hour. I'm making wealth flow into my life. Yeah. And beautiful that you're able to acknowledge that flow is created, right? A river without banks is called a flood. And so the river needs the banks to create the flow of the current. And if we're talking about money, the current goes all the way to the sea, the currency, right? And what controls the currency? The banks, right? The banks of the river. So we're talking money language. There's a hot bar. <laughs> Yeah, that, that topic can go much deeper in different directions. We'll keep it uh, topical. Sure. Now, here's the last part. Now that you've told yourself what you can do, give yourself a reason. When we give ourselves a reason to do this, we are 30% more likely to do it. So take your statement with can and add a because. I can make wealth flow into my life because... 
And by simply giving ourselves a reason, the because statement adds on 30% more likely to happen because I have a why. I can invest one hour every evening to meditate because I can become more focused and consistent because I can exercise every day for 20 minutes because. Exactly. I can exercise every day because my back will feel better. And what would it be like to be pain-free? What would it be like? Yeah. And so all of this is building, exciting the imagination that it can move in this way and create the expectation that I'm going to be pain-free in my back. And I did it because I exercised every day. Simple 20 minutes. I can increase my wealth every day because that will give me, that will give me the ability to help others. Yeah. And so it's coming back into cultivating our own resources. I help myself so I can help you. I fill my own cup till it's overflowing so I can fill that. Because otherwise I'm unable to fill uh, our collective jar from my empty cup. So I fill my cup. My cup is overflowing. And because it's overflowing, I share. I can invest one hour of presence with Kofi each day because life loves me. Beautiful. Great work, everyone, today. And so yeah. I want to say thank you. Um, thank you for coming and participating and for catching on to this material so quickly and so easily. As you see that language is something that we use all the time. And so we go so quickly through it that we are unaware of how it can affect us. And so I want to say thank you all for coming and, and being here today. And here now for the last part of our, our workshop this morning, I'd love to open up the floor to questions, answers, comments. How was your experience? Anything you'd like to share? go talk a little bit i i really like um something that happened at the at the very beginning um that you said uh definition of of mantra i really i really like that like man meaning the mind and then try you said it means tool um, all right yeah yeah i love that and yeah, just um, language itself has been something that I have been, you know, working on because I, I see, I see the power in it. Like you said, it's it's uh, spelling, and you're actually casting a spell when you say something. So, whoa, it is so um, important to observe our, ourselves on a daily basis basis and in, in how we use language yeah thank you for sharing that i i i appreciate that and i agree um and perhaps you may notice this as well uh being knowing multiple languages where you know culturally we use language in different ways and how being aware of it seeing how the way I use my words creates a different effect. Mm -hmm. And so um, when it comes to using this, get curious about your, your internal world. And if it, we catch ourselves being negative, it's okay. Mm -hmm. right? The more I catch it, the less likely I am to be affected by it, the less likely I am yes. to use that way. It's more of if I catch it, oh, hey, look, 
I'm angry again, man. I make, I make a funny face when I'm angry. Look at me. Right. And, and I'm able to bring it to a point where it's, it's just part of the story. It's just a story. And I'm a laughable character at the center of the story. Yes. Well, for me, uh, the experience is uh, something that I haven't experienced before. I actually uh, do affirmations every day, going to bed, waking up, but the way you walk us through it is different. Um, you know, the the show could come and adding why you doing you need what you need, giving it a reason. It's really something different. Um, I really think that will be useful for me. Beautiful. Thank you. And and what you wrote here in the chat, I can invest one hour every day to develop myself because I help me discover new opportunities. So it's saying also both my investment allows the world to work with me and it also empowers me to work with me in discovering new opportunities. Beautiful. Thank you. So I'll ask a question that I'm interested in. Do you have any like um specific like stories or instances of how this work like has helped some of your clients? Like be like how they started and then through this work, some empowerment. Then um uh, then I could talk about my personal experience working with you, but I think sure. Um I had a client who found me to stop smoking. And they had received a diagnosis and said, screw it, I'm going to start smoking again. And they, they, they found me in order to stop smoking. Now, they had this certain thought, train of thought that was running in their mind that they would make excuses for it. And so once we ran, we, we did the, a similar process. What we've done today as far as building affirmations or detoxing from the should, we ran out excuses. So we, I asked this person to write down all of their excuses. And when they ran out of excuses, they no longer had any reason to give themselves a way out. They were able to see what was in front of them. And what was in front of them was uh, that they wanted to, for lack of a better term, breathe fire. That was why they smoked. They, they had this level of internalized anger that was so dense inside of them that came back as a diagnosis. And what working through, especially with affirmations, was helping to retrain the brain. So the beauty of affirmations is that it works with this law of repetition. And the law of repetition is the more I repeat a certain stimuli, the more I am consistently creating a certain response. So in this person's case, anything that triggered them brought them to say that they wanted to smoke. And then they'd say, well, then they beat themselves up because they smoked too much. And their body was affected. They were coughing. They were hacking. They were having more issues at the doctor's office, needing more different tests. And so by retraining through the affirmations, we were able to cut through the smoke in order to get into being able to see what was there detoxing from from the words in certain ways allowed them to to adjust what was going on now the the story here is that they went from being a tangled tightly wound up ball of strong emotions that were held for a long time and then what we were able to do is is slowly loosen and undo and create something new. That they were as more aligned, more coherent with where they actually were and where they actually wanted to go versus they were still stuck in the past where they didn't want to be. And so we were able to slowly undo it, gain our bearings of where it was, get excited about where they wanted to go and then move in that direction. Cool. Well, yeah. Does, is there anyone else who has a question? Um, if not, I'll let you conclude concluding words, Jamie, and then I'll add my own. Awesome. Well, thanks again for everyone for being here.
And thanks for sharing with me in this, this uh, beautiful exploration of, of supercharging your affirmations, of coming into this uh, beautiful combination of how we use our language, how to use our breath to bring it into the body, and then how the body accepts it, right? The more I think something, the more I imagine it, the more the body agrees with it. And whether real or imagined in the mind, the body will make it real in some way. So I encourage you to notice where your mind wanders, your daydreams, your fantasies, your night dreams. And as you will be curious and observe where the mind goes, simply notice what you notice. And the more you're able to notice, the more you're able to be the witness and you can make a different adjustment within that. And by making a small one word adjustment in our language, we're able to make a small adjustment that he is, has bigger effects. If I can change the cause, I have a different effect. So if I can adjust my, uh, my language in a certain way, I can adjust where I'm going. So when we talk about, we'll do one last word game because I love to play with the words, um, of destiny versus fate. Now I'm in a Spanish speaking country and in English, we make a distinction of destiny versus fate. But down here in Spanish, it's the same word. It's destino, right? Yet we also take the word destination in English. Where What's your destiny? It's where you're going, right? Now to take the Carl Jung quote, until I make the unconscious conscious, it will drive your life and we will call it fate. So getting into what is destiny versus fate, destiny is what I'm aware of and where I'm going. But what drives the engine? What's the wake of the ship if we're talking about it in navigation terms? It's a way of acknowledging what we've created, where we're going, and what we've come from. So um, have fun. Get curious and be easy on yourself or be kind, right? Be easy on yourself. Well, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Jamie. Um, I want to read this comment that Quincy just posted Um, because I was just reading it. It's awesome. So he says, I thoroughly enjoyed this very inspirational journey. I expressed earlier that I'm an enlightened being and because of my diverse creative endeavors, I procrastinate. I then asked myself if seeking an end is not my intentions, is it? And I see my journey as nonlinear always residing in a perpetual state of awakening. My micro is equal to my macro. That small puzzle piece is not extraordinary as the finished piece. Ascension co-pilot, thank you. And um, thank you so much, Quincy. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you, Jamie. And um, I'll just add a few words that, so my favorite part about the Sacred Inclusion Network is the connections that are made from these little groups. And so we got about four regulars, including me, and about a couple new faces. And I just want to, um, what's the word? I was going to say inspire that, um, you know, if you want to reach out to Jamie, there's, we have yoga teachers in here. Um, we have other, we have authors in here. We have people who have um, communities similar to this in here. And that, you know, the, the connection is the most powerful piece. So um, if you have an inclination that you want to, reach out to Jamie in the future, um, please do not hesitate. That is what keeps this um, keeps this flowing. It's the, the lifeblood of the Sacred Inclusion Network. And then um, I'll just say for uh, the few new folks, that uh, this is, has been an exploration from the Sacred Inclusion Network. We do this once a month with different, extremely interesting experts, um, such as Jamie and we just allow, give them space to, to teach us and to lead us on experiential explorations. And um, thank you much for being here. We also have, um, we have community calls, which are mastermind sessions, which are bi-monthly, which the, the core members come together. And it's just like an opportunity for us to share vulnerably about what's going on in our lives or different topics that are popping up in the world. And um, we're always looking for people who are interested in um communicating more vulnerably and talking about topics and subjects that um, are becoming more and more taboo in our world. 
And um, that's very empowering, empowering for me. And last but not least, we have a, a little community website that we go and we ask each other questions and we share links and we do little fun challenges and such. So um yeah, if um there we go, we got um hello, we got his email or his IG. And um, you know, I'll put my IG though. I, I'm gonna send the email to all of you anyway. So um to those still watching, thank you so much. And um we'll see you hopefully in the future. Um peace and love, everybody. All right. Yeah, this was great. This was a really good one. Thank you so much, Jamie. That Thank you awesome. very much. It was lovely meeting you too, Jamie.